Race weekend of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup. We're in Winterberg in Germany, Talk Sauerland, just an hour away from the industrial heartland of the Ruhr Valley. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a moist Sunday morning here in Winterberg after a relatively dry day yesterday. Unfortunately, the forecast is for a lot more rain today, but hopefully that shouldn't interrupt proceedings. Martin Haven and Anne Van Nienhaus in the booth, and Anne. Wet or dry, this Winterberg track still presents plenty of challenges for our sliders. Yes, exactly. Not the hardest track in the world, but it has some technical difficulties, technical challenges. We have a pretty steep start going into curve zero, little tricky curve. You want to stay in the middle, do not touch any walls, try not to skid into the upper part of the track. Curve one to the big right hand curve two, very flat in this part of the track. You want to be quiet, you don't want to be do doing too much steering. And then you get to curve five and six. We've seen some trouble there earlier yesterday with the monobobs and the two man bobs um, hitting between those uh, four to five curves. Here we are in the Kreisel, and that's where the speed really gets into the sled, where the track starts dropping. The big curve nine, where you get a lot of G forces, a lot of pressure into the big right-hand curve 11 that sets you up for the labyrinths where you get to the highest speed on this track and then you climb uphill this big left-hand curve curve 14 onto the finish line and we have a long long breaking stretch here which probably won't be hugely necessary because uh, a damp day a frosty track might mean low speeds our world cup points leader is germany's kim kilicki just narrowly ahead of kaylee humphreys there uh, 25 points apart and lauren alter the olympic champion in third place it's been a good start to the season for switzerland's Melly hasler and canada's rookie bianca Rivi as well well, despite the weather, lots of friends and family taking the opportunity for the first time in three years to actually come and see a race at the track. And I think the athletes have really responded to the fact that people are back here as well. I talked to a couple of the athletes yesterday and they were very surprised. It was, they were like in shock, like who are all these people and why are they shouting at us? <laughs> they weren't used yeah. to having so much support anymore and especially like the North American races. There, there are a few fans and family that, that come, but uh, European racing is, is a different story yeah. and uh, definitely in Germany where it is a national sport. Yeah, very much so. And of course the track here is almost in the middle of the town of Winterberg. It's uh, right on the edge of, of town, so very easily accessible. And of course, for the low countries and even from the UK and so on, there, there's plenty of opportunity to get here very easily. Well, we've got 16 sleds in our start draw. We welcome back our Chinese athletes. The Aussies are here. Romania, we've got a couple of sleds from them as well. They weren't in North America. So as we expected, seeing a lot more uh, of the, quote, smaller nations, although China's not strictly a small nation, uh, racing here compared to what we had at the start of the season in North America. Race 4 of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup in Winterberg in Germany. First of two heats and the first sled on ice. China's Ying Ching with Wang Yu behind her, making her World Cup debut. The 22-year-old brakeman has only had two bobsleigh races in her career so far. Gets in neatly behind her driver. And a 5.68. She already showed a good start yesterday in her monobob and here together with her brakeman setting off the pace at 5.68. Very quiet so far. Crossing it over from two to three and bringing it round to a later entrance into four and nails that exit. Doesn't hit that wall on the take on a five like we've seen a lot of sleds do yesterday in a mono and a two win bob. Relatively little tap there, relatively dry overnight, so the track looks like it's in pretty good condition again today. Yeah, and that little tap made a wavy line in curve nine, but she managed the exit. And it's looking like a very quiet run, climbing uphill 128.2 kilometers per hour. And, and 
57.83. The track record is a 56.54, so 1.3 seconds away. We will have faster runs in this heat, but I don't think we'll get too close to the track record. The start record, Alana Myers-Taylor and Kerry Jones set that in December 2015, the uh, autumn after Alana had won the World Championships here. And again, that's probably not going to be challenged. This was basically her, her only biggest mistake of the track, bringing it a little bit too far around out of curve eight, hitting that wall before entering curve nine and a little bit up and down there. And like High the, in the exit of 11, but nice labyrinth. Like the expansion joint between three and four, looks like there's a little bit of ice sticking out there, a hammer sticking out and bang, catches the sled. Well, next up, a World Cup debut in women's bob for Slovakia's Victoria Chernanska and Lucia Mokrosova. Lucia has had no official bobsleigh races at all. Doesn't mean she's not been in the sled, it just means she hasn't been in a race yet. A former heptathlete, she joins the youth Olympic silver medalist who made her World Cup debut in the monobob yesterday. And Victoria is actually driving my rented sled, Ruby. All right. Yeah, so she had uh, only three training runs in it this week and now uses it for the first time on this race. Take care of it. Anne's watching. <laughs> I have full trust in her abilities. Well, two years ago Quiet. in the Youth Olympic Games in Samaritz, now at World Cup level and hopefully going to the full Olympic, uh, full um, uh, World Championships in Samaritz as well in a couple of weeks' time. She started a little bit slower than her Chinese competitor, and that's why she's uh, behind by half a second already, trying to catch up. High speed, yep. leaner entrance into curve nine. A little high there in the end, and it puts it into a skip going into curve 11. Not ideal to carry the most speed possible. Little touch there as well, and that's where she lost the speed coming out of curve nine. Across the line, 58-49. We saw coach Milan Jaknesak. And her World Cup career is underway in mono and women's bobsleigh. So welcome to Victoria and to Lucia. Coming into Kreisel, a little bit high in the entrance, but flattens it out. You can see the head of the brakeman there being shook around. Yeah. Getting the pressure in there. She brings it down a little bit too soon, and that's why she has this end pressure, bringing her up in the very end of the curve. Avoids the woodwork just, but then it touches the inside wall and puts her in the skid going into curve 11. It's hard to carry the speed then. Well, you see the brakeman clearly quite tall. She couldn't quite fit in straight behind her driver, having to cant her head to one side. Next up for Romania, the first of two Romanian sleds, Andrea Grecu, we're used to seeing her, and reunited with Teodora Vlad. Teodora in her ninth women's bobsleigh World Cup. She's also started a four-man race. 37th World Cup for Andrea Grecu as a driver. Last time here, 14th and 20th last season. She has had a top six result on this track, so let's see where she finds herself today. We didn't catch the start time there. It was a 5.77, so second quickest start. And her brakeman, Theo, is actually also driving in the Europe Cup to circuit. And we'll probably be driving here on the Junior World Championships next week. Clean lines of Andrea, avoids that tap going into Kreisel. A little bit of a dip there in the middle of Kreisel and brings it out a little bit soon. And you see that right presser, pressure coming out of that 270 degree Kreisel. Nice exit, early entrance into curve 11 means she doesn't have to do a lot of driving to bring it over here in the labyrinth. And she's bringing the gap right down to level. Looks like she's got enough speed to go in front here. How much of an advantage at the line? Nine hundredths of a second. She was outstarted by nine hundredths compared to the Chinese uh, Ying and Wang and outdrove them by nine hundredths. Yeah. 
Well, the rule of bobsleigh is if you're a tenth back at the start, you should be three tenths back at the bottom. So she should have been 27 hundreds back. So uh, a, a significant improvement on the drive of the Chinese athletes. And this is also her home track. So she has yeah. a lot of runs here, Andrea. Very much so. A lot of runs in the back seat and a lot of runs now in the front seat as well. This is actually Andrea's 51st World Cup start. So 37 as a driver and the rest as a brake woman. So she has the lead after the first three sleds down. Next up with the yellow nose, the first of our German sleds. Now, Lisa Bukvitz was the winner here in the last race as a brake woman for Kim Kalicki. She's now racing against Kim Kalicki as a driver. She has Kira Lipperheide behind her who took silver in the last race here in January behind Mariama Yamanka. So third World Cup start for Lisa Bukvitz as a driver. She was fourth and fifth in the two races she did in the USA. Two real powerhouses yeah. between the sled there. 552, very strong start. Clean around the curve zero bend. Now that's only 900 away from the all-time start record and in moist conditions, that's pretty impressive. That's a very impressive start indeed. The moist does affect the track, um, but normally it doesn't affect the start as much as it does the, the real drive down. Um, sometimes a really cold temperature, it makes it a little bit more sticky and actually harder at the start. So start times should be fairly comparable. Nice looking lines from Lisa Bukvitz. And a big advantage already. Oh, it just and touches there and it puts her back end into a skid going into curve 11. Well, that's going to wipe off about a quarter of a second. That Very quiet in the labyrinth, so and almost 130 yeah. kilometers per hour. And dips her head at the line for 57, 10, 6400 in front. But that skid going into curve 11 will definitely have robbed her of some speed. Yeah. Well, Lisa Bukvitz learning to drive over the last three or four years while also being basically Germany's number one brake woman. So was a brake woman in the Olympic Games again in Beijing in February. And a big smile. Yeah. The exit of curve eight. Just rubbing that wall going into curve nine, a little bit high, dipping there, coming up. And she's managing the pressure there, but being that high at the end of the curve, it pushes her over onto the entrance of 11 too soon, and it puts her back end into that skit. Well, friends and family, parents, grandparents, all here. <laughs> And really nice for the athletes to have that ability after a couple of years away. Fourth World Cup for Canada's Bianca Reby made her debut sensationally in Whistler with victory in the monobob race. Neve Hockey behind her, so fourth World Cup start for her. And Bianca has never driven this track. Skid there coming out of the starting grooves and she doesn't get it under control before curve zero and hits and skids there as well. It's a pity for their 568 start. Yeah, that was a, a pretty wild. And it, a, again, that shows just how easy it is to get these sleds into a skid when there's no pressure at all. She was pushing it quite far, probably didn't have her hands on the gearings by the time they got out of the starting groups. Fourth fastest speeds of the five sleds so far, so that, that hit and skid will definitely cost her a lot of time. Clean looking line through nine, very nice exit. A little bit flat and low through 11, but a nice crossover into the labyrinths. Tiny tap on the take on a 14. Second highest speed, so really bringing it back in her drive with a 58-11. Yeah. <laughs> Lyndon Rush and Justin Krebs were not too pleased with that. A second back. Well, I mean, that was all, all that, zero. Yes. You know, actually, they'd have been better if they, they would have been faster if they jogged off and or sat in almost. Oh, she will be very frustrated yeah, with that. Of course. But, you know, first time here. Let's take a look at where it all goes wrong. So she struggles to get her feet in, I think. Yeah. I think she's maybe caught up in the steering. Yeah. 
and then already drifts out, hit the inside wall. It pushes her over to early zero, and then it's just hitting and skidding. Well, some dramatic pictures for those fans overhanging the corner there. And that's a great indication of how close you get as a fan to the action. You don't get that in, in motorsports, but you can be right on the wall of the track here. Well, Lisa Bukvitz leads from Andrea Greco. First five sleds in Winterberg. Melanie Hassler, the first of two consecutive Swiss sleds now. 18th World Cup start. She's got Irina Strabel behind her. Irina in her 18th World Cup race as well, although most of Irina's races were with Martina Fonteneva. Ninth and 13th here last season, Melanie Hassler. Led the Monobob race yesterday and then faded in the second heat to go down to seventh. 5.66, second fastest start time, second fastest velocity coming out of curve zero. And I was talking to her yesterday after her second heat in the Monobob and she was very surprised that she dropped that many places. Felt like it was a really nice run, but just didn't help. Yeah. There she hits that take on into curve five hitting that expansion joint and there as well being pushed away on the entrance of curve six and just taking away a little bit of her speed there dropped into the third fastest velocity and now fourth fastest velocity let's see if she can keep the damage to a minimum and that's a really nice exit bringing it nice and parallel to 11 climbing there a little bit crossing it over really nice tiny tap on the take on third fastest speed bringing it into second place. Well, still lots of gaps that other sleds Tied can with, fall into, yeah. Tied with Andrea Greco from Romania. Six tenths back. That's a lot of time away from the leader, Lisa Bukvitz. Two more German sleds to go. We've got Kaylee Humphreys to come as well. So there could still be a lot of improvements. Again, just a little too much a corner zero. Yeah, and it slides off sideways. And. She stays straight in the, in the straightaway to zero. And there hits that yeah. take on coming out of curve four, a little bit too far around, and Peter is not very pleased with that. Uh, that expansion joint has slowed an awful lot of sleds down this week. You have to be careful of that in the junior worlds as well. So next up is Martina Fonteneva of Switzerland in what we think will be her last season of sliding. Mara Morel behind her in only her third World Cup start. It's only her eighth bobsleigh race since she made her debut in January 2021. And for Martina, a return to the World Cup for the first time since Samaritz at the end of last season. Martina and Mara were sliding in the Europa Cup earlier this season. Yep. And they had to live up to some pretty strict Swiss standards to be in the top three overall Europa Cup to be able to slide this race, but she did that. She did that. She had four medals in the Europe Cup. 569 and dealt with corner zero pretty nicely. Nice shortcut from curve one to two. On this flat part, you want to keep the driving distance to a minimum. Really try to take the short lines. Nice entrance into five. Very smooth. Little touch there going into six and also a slight push away going into Kreisel. A bit of a wave in the middle of Kreisel brings it out nice into curve eight. No touching on the wall. Oh, and there a dip in curve nine and she's just has an end pressure but manages it well. Comes up there in curve 11 at the exit. Nice crossover 12 to 13. Avoids the hit before 14. A little bit up and down there as well. And in fifth place, 57.97. No big mistakes, but just overall a little bit, yeah. a little bit wavy here and there. 2300s behind her younger teammate, Melanie Hasler. And that's a balance you want to find as a driver. You don't want to be overdriving it and always doing a lot of work to keep it on the straight lines and on the flat lines. Sometimes you want to keep your sled free, but it's a it's a fine line between doing too much and doing too less. Yeah. Less is more see. up to a certain point. <laughs> you can see the dip here. She's on the lower lines. You can see the white lines where the runners pass. And then she's on the upper lines there just before the exit of curve 11. So it's just a little bit more distance you do. You don't do a lot of driver, b driving, but you do a little bit more of distance, so it's a 
it's a balance between those two. Next up, Riley Compton, Emily Renner. Fourth World Cup start for Riley Compton. Her first race here <coughs> in Winterberg, excuse me. Marine Corps College softball player. That's the link that got her in through Alana Myers-Taylor, another softball player. And from Rochester, New York, Emily Renner, a hurdler. Race with Katie Humphreys in Whistler. Race with Riley in Park City. She's possibly driving a Romanian rental sled. It looks like the Romania blue color that they often have on this sled. Not in very late, but managed to handle corner zero pretty well. 578 start. Early on to curve three. Controlled it nicely. Middle entrance into four. Good control there. Middle to five. Just not enough control into curve five and hitting that wall before curve six and out of curve six. Like Bianca Ribi, a World Cup rookie this season, has never been to this and track. A big touch there. Good control. A little bit of pressure. Parallel tap going into 11. The, and then there's a middle entrance of 12. Pushes her away a little bit in 13. Has to do a lot of work to come out of 13. So where's she going to end up? Right with Bianca Ribi now, eighth place. So a 58-5-0. So the exit of curve 11 caused her a little bit of problems into the labyrinth. She was a little bit out, she was out too soon. Didn't have the pressure to bring her over early into 12. And that's why she hit the wall between the labyrinth curves and it, she had troubles to come out of the labyrinth. Big hit there, going into curve nine. But then she corrects it well, little bit of a dip. And there we can see the exit of curve 13 where she really had to work hard to bring it out. And then the hard tap going into curve 14. And we're, you can see the jump that the sled Boy. does. <laughs> Brakeman so will be the around. Yeah. yeah, inches off the, off the sled there. And she will have known that that was a close call. Well, from relatively little experience to a lot more, Cynthia Appiah. This is only her 13th World Cup start as a driver, but her 25th in total, the former brake woman. And she's got Leah Walkerden behind her. Leah in her third World Cup start. And actually in her 12th race in total, she made her debut in November 21 in North America's Cup with Bianca Ribi. And Cynthia really showed a big second run yesterday in a monobob. I think she will look to that run to, to do two of those here today in the two men and still relatively new drivers she's still looking for that consistency handled zero well 564 second fastest start time so far so we know cynthia is a real powerhouse and she has a great brakeman behind her to help her with that start as well last year she was eighth in december 21 and 12th in January 22. Good quiet line so far, third fastest speed. Flat to the Kreisel, good control, brings it round, early entrance to eight, a good entrance into curve nine. Controlled line, nice and parallel, a little bit late going into 11, but no problem, oh, there a little pop up. And brings it out. The touch before going into the uphill curve 14. And a really nice 57 73, just 100 in front of the tie we have between Andrea Greco and Emma Nessler. Well, there you go, so three sleds covered by 100. Very happy with yeah. that run, very excited with it. And before you see the time, when you're coming over the finish line, you know if you've had a good run, don't you? Usually you know it, if you had a good run, but then it's still a little bit of a question, like did you pick the right material? Mm. There was it. Sometimes it feels good, but you still don't have the speed. And yeah. um, so it's always really exciting to see that you, you get the, the second place or a, um, with nine sleds passed, it's nice to, to be in second place.
And she knows that she's got two more German sleds and a two-time Olympic champion coming up behind her. So being the best of the rest behind Lisa Bookwitz is a good place to be right now. Very excited, Cynthia. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely ramped. So lots of noise at the top of the track now for Germany's Olympic champion, Lara Nolte, winner of both races here last season. One with Deborah Levy, one with Lisa Bookwitz. Deborah is out for the rest of the season now. So now it's good is back in with her. She raced in Park City, originally from Gladbach, a hurdler and heptathlete. And she's also a world push champion with Lisa Bukwitz. Yeah. So a very strong pushing team here. And look at the way they're just in so quickly. 5.55 five, 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 five. Five. and a beautiful zero curve as well. Brings it right down the middle to curve one. Tries to be very quiet here in the upper part. Middle transition going into curve three to a late entrance into curve four. So she has all the time to turn it and bring it to the middle of curve five. Looks very controlled, very nice, no touching so far. Four World Cup starts here. She's got two golds and two bronze medals. Middle entrance of curve nine, a little bit high there in the entrance. Brings it over perfectly. Early entrance into curve 11. Controlled line. Nice crossover all the time. Little touch there going uphill at 130.5 kilometers per hour. First let to see that yeah. 130s and 56.88. There we go. That's the way it's done. Lauren Alter lays the benchmark down. And she looks happy with that as well. Little fist bump as she came across the line. Boy, she was so excited yesterday. time in these conditions. Yeah, yeah. Only 34 hundredths of the track record yep. in these conditions is very impressive driving. And, and the Florida. track record was set in the World Champs in 2015, and that was cold and hard ice. And here, one of the nicest exits we've seen so far uses the pressure of curve 10 to bring her over to 11. It does seem like the take on pushes her away a little bit. And here we can see her on the higher lines of the curve 11. A nice control to bring her over to the early entrance of curve 12. Good news for Lauren Alta is there is still more to be found. And a big smile. Yeah, the bad news for everybody else is that she's already a quarter second ahead and 8,500 back to third place. Cynthia Appiah leading the chase for the medals there. But next up is a two-time Olympic champion, Kaylee Humphreys, in her 17th World Cup start on this track. Not one of her favorites. But she has had success here before, won in 2012. Can she strike gold a decade later? And she has, she has Keisha Love on the back of her sled. Yep. Keisha is driving now as well. She will be competing next week in Junior Worlds here as a driver. Um, but this week she's still pushing for Kaylee, so it's nice yeah. to see the crossovers there as well. Well, they competed in the Olympic Games together. They raced together in Lake Placid and won. And Kaylee was just delighted to be able to uh, take a gold with Keisha. So let's see what they've got here. They're in the red by five hundredths of a second. Quiet lines from Kaylee. She knows how to drive this track. She knows how to drive a lot of the tracks. No mistakes so far. Very quiet. Middle entrance into curve nine, using that pressure to bring her parallel to curve 11. A little bit high there, and that puts her up nicely to the transition for the labyrinths. No touch to go into uphill curve 14. Third fastest speed, 129.1, and a third place at the finish line. out of silver. Still got one German sled to come, but Katie Humphreys in the top three at the moment in the Great White Shark. I was saying to her yesterday, does it have a name? She said, yeah, you called it the Great White Shark. I said, oh, OK. So maybe it's Jaws or something. I don't, yeah, haven't quite got to that yet. A nice run from Kaylee. 57 start. Good start. Yeah. Asking for the start time. Yeah, 200 slower than Lauren Alter. So that's not bad. Really took her time to get into the sled. Like Again, stayed looked, parallel looked like to maybe curve. she got her feet just kind of hooked up in the... But it didn't put her into the skid. No. 
And that's props to the brakeman as well to have a really parallel load, not drifting the sled out of the grooves. Our winner in January, Kim Kilicki, with Leni Thieving behind her. 17th World Cup start. Her last, Leni, was in Park City, where she was a winner. And the 20th World Cup start for Kim Kilicki. Gold last time out. And this pair, Kim and Leoni, took the bronze medal in December 21 here. And and also have German, German fans at the start of the track. Yeah. You can hear them cheering very loud. 5.56, third fastest start time. Little touch there coming out of course. You random voids the touch going into curve one. So the three fastest starts are a 55, a 56, and a 57. Uh, oh no, a 52 yeah. is the fastest of these little bits. Just a little bit sliding off yep. that curve four. She's sideways she's energy you don't want to have. A little less control than maybe she might like. Then maybe she is driving a really wide runner setup with big radius, so yep. she's choosing speed over control, and that's why she's sliding off of some curves. Third best speed. Smidge quicker than Kaylee Humphreys at this stage. Very nice lower lines from 9 to 11. And second highest speed, 129.9. And dips her head at the line, 57.13. And she's right into mix with Lisa yep. Buchwitz and Kaylee Humphreys. 25 minutes up the pace of Laura Moulton. It shows how fast she drove that sled. Yeah. 500s ahead of Kaylee Humphreys, third and fourth, and 300s behind Lisa Buchwitz, second and third. Well, we haven't had a German clean sweep of the podium since, oh, January oh, and December last year, and the year before that, and the year before that. In fact, the only non-German who's been on the podium in five races is Katy Beil of Austria. Morning, Katy. Hopefully she's doing well, and look forward to seeing her in Innsbruck. Nice parallel line into curve 11. It stays in the middle of those wide driving lines. You can see of all the sleds who pass on the ice. They leave a little, little mark and you can really see where the pressures are, where the lines expand or come together. Our third US sled is Nicole Vogt with Jasmine Jones behind her. Nicole's 11th World Cup start now. Raced here in Europe Cup in January of this year. Jazz from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, fourth World Cup start. Did Whistler and Lake Placid with Nicole. Raced in Park City with Kaylee to a bronze medal. And she's driving a American BMW sled compared to a lot of the other girls who are driving BTC sleds. 579. 12th best start. Let's see if she can outdrive the start. It's 100 slower than Riley Compton and Emily Renner. Quite hard on, this, on the steers on curve two and curve three. Just avoids that wall there going into curve five. It's only a second time at the track. So again, like Riley Compton. And a very high entrance into the Chrysler. Takes the pressure at the end of the Chrysler and then hits the wall before going into curve eight. A little dip there in the middle. And little skids Speedy. everywhere and a big skid there. Up and down into curve 11, but a nice crossover. No problems out of 13. Well, it was a top 10 run. I'm not sure it's going to end up that way. Where does and she finish? Oh. Well, there's the first victory roll, 11th at the line. I hope the girls are OK, and they can hide into the sled, and someone catches them so they don't have to do the backwards slide. They are Just very experienced. Actually, I noticed halfway down the track, you can see gouges in the in the ice. And I'm not sure if one of the forerunners went over this morning, but somebody has crashed recently. Well, there, getting out the, the back is okay. Jasmine Jones. And there's Nicole Folk. Looks like they are OK. It is a really tricky crash for brakemen because they are preparing to pull the brakes as soon yeah. as they cross the finish line. So most of the times they try to get their hands already to the braking the brake handles. handles. Uh, yeah. We can see a thumbs up. She's okay. Thumbs up from Jazz. So yeah, no, exactly. So they're not hanging up there. You hang on to tiny little hooks inside the sled. So you could see she was boom bringing it down a little bit too soon, and there was some end pressure. Yeah coming from low to high, and it just rolls her over. 
She can avoid hitting her head in that crash, but... Well, the good news is, relatively slow, Jasmine wasn't looking to be sitting up over the line and getting on the brakes early, so hopefully she was just still hanging on. They look OK, and they cross the line safely, so they should be able to continue in the second heat. Next up, our second debutante in the field, as she was yesterday in the monobob, Georgetta Popescu with Antonia Sabu behind her. Antonia, like Georgetta the driver, they're both 20 years old. Both raced in the Youth Olympic Games in 2020. Georgetta took gold, and her great woman finished in 20th place. Very nice, around curve zero. And great to see Romania with another young crew coming up. And I'm not sure whether the brake woman, Antonia, is still driving. She has done the Europa Cup races on the brakes last year. Just avoids that expansion joint going into curve five. But hits the take on off curve six and it pushes her away, makes the exit so much harder. Up and down in cries, a lot of pressure there in the exit, pushing over to the wall between eight and nine. Georgetta's had three races here in the Europe Cup. The parallel tap and she's up and down really. Now she's gonna struggle in the labyrinths, but she managed it really well. A little Olympic bit down champion. and up there too, but she yeah. keeps the pressure low. She knows it was coming. Youth Olympic champion and the under-23 junior world champion last year. I imagine we won't see her in Altenburg next week with the junior world being here. She will looking to extend yeah. that title. So she and Victoria Chenanska will be among those, I'm sure, who stay here for junior worlds. It's be quite a different look to the field in the World Cup in Altenburg next week. You can see she's high, <coughs> low there already. Pressure picks her up again. And because of that pressure, she is pushed to the right side of the screen, left side of the track, and that puts her away of the entrance of curve 11. She's she high, dips again. She had she's trouble there in both runs in the monobob, didn't she? <laughs> Nearly parked it both times. But this is good experience for her. Yeah. Driving on World Cup eyes, it's, it's different than and the, the cameras and the lights place. and all yeah and all the big names in the dressing room and all the other nonsense going on exactly right why Ming Ming for china 15th world cup start made her debut debut in calgary in february 2019 has raced here in the world cup and the 2020 junior worlds and wang Zhuan, her break woman made her debut in innsbruck in november 21 not the greatest hit from the two Very quiet load, efficient load of the Breitman. 561, fifth fastest push time and fourth fastest velocity. So really took all that speed along curve zero. You can see some more spectators yeah. in the track now. I think we'll see a lot more this afternoon for the four man as well. Quite far around curve three. And then hits that take on of yeah. curve five. And it makes it so much harder to control. A lot of sideways energy there from five to six. Tried to avoid that wall, but did a lot of driving to get there. Well, this is looking like potentially a very good run. She was 19th and 6th in the two races last year. This looks like more of the latter. Very good exit of curve nine. Uses that pressure in curve 10 to bring her over to 11. She is still a top five runner right now. It doesn't have a lot of speed at, no. the, at the finish, but Across the line, eighth place in the end, but she it was top five close. all the way down to the labyrinth. She is only two hundredths of the tie of Andrea Greco and Melanie has her only three hundredths of Cynthia. Yeah. So she nearly finished in front of Cynthia, ends up three hundredths behind. So we got Appia, Greco, Hassler and Y, four sleds, three hundredths. That's a dead heat. So that's going to be a big sort out in the second run. And she did have the slight disadvantage of being in the back of the field and this mistake cost her a lot of time. If she yeah. would clean that up, I think she can she can look into... Well, listen, if she hadn't done places. that, Kaylee Humphreys is, what, 600, 800? No, no. Okay, a long way there's, by ahead. No, the, so she could have been ahead gap. of Cynthia Appia, definitely. That's going to be a very though. interesting battle, yeah. Okay, and our final sled uh, together again for, I won't sing, uh, for the first time in almost 12 months, Bree Walker and Sarah Blizzard uh, Bree's 17th 
women's bobsleigh World Cup start. Her fifth World Cup here, December 21. She was finished seventh place. That remains her best World Cup result. And Sarah driving monobob and breaking for Brie on Europe Cup before Christmas in her 10th World Cup start. Pierre Luders at the back, shouting them off as ever. Nobody hangs around when Pierre's going go. 565 and a nice corner zero. Seven, seventh fastest start, sixth fastest velocity. So that shows that she managed that curve zero really well. Seventh here in December 21 remains her best result. She could be on target for that again here. Just avoids that wall. You can see her almost thinking her way away from that tap going into curve five. Well, she got snagged by that in the first heat in the monobob and avoided it in the second. She's done the same it here again. Speed. And this Still. is a top five run. Pressure there puts her away, late into 11, up and down there. But she crosses it over. No touch between 12 and 13. A little touch there going uphill four to pass the speed. So yeah. really carrying that speed Top along. Top five at the line. It is fifth place for Bree Walker. And a big Good smile. Job. Yeah, absolutely. Pierre. Good job there. From seventh fastest start to fifth at the bottom. And actually, she's not in that tight battle with Apia Greco has her, and like she's two tenths ahead of them. So she split the difference between the following pack and Kaylee Humphreys. Right in the right, middle there. She's three tenths behind Kaylee, so a medal is unlikely. And their parallel exit uses the pressure, brings her up a little bit there. And that's why she's pushed away, hits that wall on her left side, right side of the screen, and that's why she's late going into curve 11. And that makes you go up and down she chose not to correct it too much not to do a lot of driving and that's why she's waving up and down in curve 11. so Bree walker in fifth place with sarah blizzard after the first heat big smiles there yeah. the girls. but our race leaders lauren alter and nela scooton lauren alter with two wins on this track already under her belt looking for a third here and she's got a handy advantage, 22 hundreds ahead of Lisa Bookwitz, who is 3 hundreds ahead of Kim Kalicki and 8 hundreds ahead of Kaylee Humphreys. And the way that it looks, you've got a leader and then a three-way battle for the other two medals. But we saw this yesterday. It's so easy to give away time here. It is so easy to give away time. The, the tricky four to five that's been set up, um, one mistake, eight to nine, it can cost you a lot of time. And if you don't manage curve zero well, then you can basically get out and try again. Uh, yeah. So a lot can happen <laughs> in the second heat. Look at some of those tight battles. We talked about the battle for six down, but look at Victoria Chinanska and Riley Compton, 100th between them. So everybody's got something to fight for in the second and deciding heat. And we will be back with the Sleds on Ice at 11.30 local, 10.30 GMT. Join Amber Neuenhaus, the IBSF TV crew, me, Martin Haven. We'll see you then. Bye for now. Thank you. 